Okay, let's start with our application. Let's start with the easier one. Where can we apply the grating? The first and the foremost application is very simple. It's about calculating the wavelength of light. Yeah, because if I have an unknown wavelength of light, if I pass it through a grating, I will get a diffraction pattern. Oh, I'll get an interference pattern. And the pattern would have a fringe width, beta, which is given as lambda d divided by small d. We have seen this before, nothing changes. And so from the screen, I can calculate what beta is. I can calculate, I, I will always know what capital D is. And I can calculate what the small d is. That's the screen, uh, the slit distance. And so I can now evaluate what lambda is. So I can evaluate what the unknown wavelength of light is. Now you will say, well, this is nothing new. We've discussed this before. In fact, Young did this and calculated the wavelength of light. So why use the grating? You're asking me why use the grating? Why go for double slit? Look at the patterns. Look at them. Compare them. And you tell me in which one do you think it's easier to calculate the fringe width, the beta? In which one do you think it's easier to calculate the distance between the two maximas? Go ahead. You tell me. The grating, right? Because it has such a sharp lines that it's very easy to calculate the distances between them. In the double slit, it is smeared because it is spread over so it's not so easy to lock on to where exactly the position of the maxima is. But in the grating, it is very sharp. And so the precision increases and we have more precise answers now. We get more accurate values of the wavelength. Therefore, we will always go for the grating and not the double slit to calculate the wavelength of the unknown light sources. Okay, I can see that you're not impressed by this. All right, let's get to the main part and we will do that with an example. Suppose my grating has about 10,000 slits per centimeter. Then the distance between any two slits is going to be roughly one divided by 10,000. That gives you about 10 to the minus six meters. That's a micrometer. That's a very small distance. Let's take the value of D to be one meter. Okay, that's, that's good enough. And let's now calculate what would be the value for beta for two sources. So let's start with red color, 650 nanometer. And if you plug in, you will see beta to be about 0.65 meters or 65 centimeter. And let the other source be blue, 450 nanometer as an example. And this gives you a beta of 45 centimeters, which means the entire pattern of blue would be a little narrower. So here is the intensity graph of red, this distance being 65 centimeters. And relative to this, blue would look somewhat like this. The distance, this distance now being 45 centimeter. And the pattern you would see on the screen would be like this. And this is the first thing I want to show you. Here are the LEDs. Once the grating is attached to the cam, you will see these fringes. Lights off and look at that. That is cool, right? Let's just focus on the red and the blue as we had discussed. That is exactly what we discussed, right? You see the blue fringes are closer because of its shorter wavelength compared to the red. But I can feel that you are very, very eager to learn about the true application of this. Okay, so here it is. Suppose instead of two sources, there was just one source of light containing the two wavelengths, the red and the blue. If we just looked at it, we would see uh, red and blue together giving some sort of a pinkish color. But when we put the grating, each color or the wavelength gives its own pattern just like before. And so we can find out what wavelengths are present in the source. Cool, huh? This is what we call as spectroscopy. Using the grating and finding out what wavelengths are present in a given source. But wait, why can't we just do that with the double slit? Oh, again, really? You really want to look at how the double slit would look like? Here it is. Uh, with the double slit, it's just a mess, right? I mean, the whole thing is just spread out and, and there's nothing you can do about it. So just forget about, just forget about the double slit. So you can't do anything about it. Okay. <clears throat> so grating is a very 
high resolution instrument. So we can figure out the wavelengths present in the source. So what you ask? <laughs> Look, every single element has a characteristic spectrum. It is a signature of that element. So by figuring out what wavelengths are present in the source, we can figure out what elements are present in the source. For example, take mercury vapor lamp. Inside is of course mercury. And you put the grating. I switch off the background light. You can see this amazing pattern. What you're seeing over here are the first order maximas. You notice at the center, all, are, all of the wavelengths are coinciding because the central maxima is the same. But the first order maximas are different, just like the red and blue wavelengths are having their first order maximas to be at different positions. So you can see, you see a blue color here, there's a green and this orangish thingy, and this is the signature of mercury. What that means is if I ever take any random source, I use a diffraction grating, and if I ever find out that these particular wavelengths are present in that spectrum, I know that source has mercury in it. Therefore, what we can do now is sitting here on Earth, we can take the light from sun and stars and other galaxies, find the spectrum, and figure out what they are made up of. That's what we can do. And not just that, we can calculate what the composition of the stars are, we can make a rough estimate of the age of the star. Also, we can figure out at what speed these stars are moving. <laughs> that is a story for another day, but we can figure out so much more. So, grating is truly awesome. I'd like to take a minute to thank my YouTube friend and an awesome physics teacher from Singapore, Mr. Shoaka Hing, for allowing me to use his demonstrations with the grating patterns of the LED and the mercury vapor lamp. He's got more pattern for you. If you really want to see it, you better click over here. And his channel is all about uh, demonstrations on various physics concepts. It's really awesome. You should visit it.